How's it going, everybody? I'm Drifty from Driftwood Gaming. This is going to be a Let's Make a Game episode. I don't even remember. It's been too long. But uh, a lot of progress has been made on the game um, in small little spurts here and there and sometimes long eight-hour grinds of working on it. But I haven't updated the, the progress, uh, you know, in the, the episodic video series of Let's Make a Game in a long time, over a month. So I thought today we would just play through the game and see what it looks like now and compare it to what it looked like when it started many many months ago um, but yeah like so we got this little starting creation area and uh, at the start of the game there will be a title screen but it's just like a click uh, title screen and uh, I'll forget it I'll just show you it I think that's we'll just go to like the, the the starting screen and sort of take a look at what it'll actually look like at the beginning of the game somewhat closer to what it'll actually look like anyway so it's going to be like keyboard uh, required sort of right here. And you get animations and you start screen and you can click on your options or whatever. But we're just going to click start new game. And that's going to teleport you here. Which is going to seem kind of weird because you're like, okay, we're in a new game. But then you come up to here and you can still load a save game if you want. Uh, I might take this out because it seems like a little bit of redundancy. But I don't know. Um, we'll see how this goes. But anyway, if you cancel out oh or you if you do that you could always do that too and right click to open your save file but anyway <clears throat> yeah let's start a new game alright so we've actually already started a new game um, so if you were to collect like some stuff off of this area then you would keep it for a new game. If you load a save game, of course, that stuff doesn't matter. But let's uh, start a new game. It's going to teleport you to, like, this little Hall of Heroes. This will be expanded and probably uh, split up a little bit. Like, Chaos Control uh, told me to split it up. Like, let the player pick male or female and then have, like, all of the male ones in its own screen and all the female ones on its own screen. <clears throat> right now, they're just put together. I, I imagine to have uh, multiple more... Um, options for what your heroes can look like. I also try to do the character creator. It just doesn't work for me. I don't know why. It's probably has something to do with the number of plugins that I'm using and and compatibility issues somewhere. But there is a new version of Creator EX that I might check out later. Okay. Anyway, let's uh, let's pick some some characters. So when you pick what your character looks like. You'll say uh, yes or no. You'll see a picture of their face, and if you like the face and the, the walker sprite, then you can say yes, and that's what your party member will look like. Then you have to pick a job for your um, for your for your first hero. Um, the list goes on to include all of the Final Fantasy XI jobs, but this will be expanded, and the idea is to have a lot of replayability with this game and try to tackle different challenges, and um, there will be some hard bosses that I don't expect people to beat. Um, and that's just the, the nature of the game because there's no level cap, right? So you can go, you get skills all the way up to level 99, level pretty fast, not too slow. It'll slow down and you get to like 20s, 30s, 40s. It starts, you know, you'll notice a difference from 1 to 10 to 10 to 20, obviously. But that's something I'm going to keep messing with that number, keep tweaking that number to get it just right so that it doesn't feel like... Uh, <clears throat> You do the whole game and you're only level 30. I, I want you to be at least level 50, 60 by the time you get done with the main storyline. The main storyline, which not is, it's not even in the game yet, because that's going to be the final thing before you start uh, putting in the main storyline. And the reason why I recommend doing that is is mainly because, say you want to change your font or any small little thing, if you've already got pages and pages of stuff written out in like you know, space correctly. You could use no tax to auto space it, which would save you some time, and it's probably a good practice to do using uh, Yamsai's message core and and uh, word wrapping note tags. Uh, you know, but if you do change your font, it's going to change, you know, the size of it, and it's going to change uh, spacing and like uh, the way that some of your dialogue appears. So if you do uh, think you might be changing your font, you might want to. Pick that font, that font out and, and find a, a good version of what you want it to look like before you do all the pages and pages of dialogue. It's going to save you a lot of time in the long run. So, alright, let's just take uh, 
So I've got this long list of jobs. Not of the, not all of them are implemented yet. Warrior's done, Monk's done, White Mage is done, Black Mage is done, Red Mage is done, Thief is done, Paladin done, Dark Knight's done, Beastmaster I just started, Bard I just started. Now, <clears throat> I try to do Beastmaster using uh, SRD Summon Core. It's not quite working right, like the, the it's summon, it's summoning the dragon pet that I gave the Beastmaster, but then as soon as the dragon, uh, as soon as it uses any ability, it just disappears. The health bar stays there, but it disappears. I don't know what's going on. Um, could be more compatibility issues. I'm going to keep messing with it and try to just change uh, note tags that I'm using. And maybe I'll finagle it, uh, find a way to make it work. But if not, I'll have to figure something else. Because I was really hoping the Summon Core would work for Summoner and Beastmaster. Um, I'll keep messing with it and uh, let you know if I can figure something good out. I've got one summon skill for the Beastmaster and it works, but then it doesn't. When As soon as the the, the pet uses an ability, um, it disappears. Uh, even if I have the Beastmaster like, leave the party, like when you summon him, you know, like it's it replaces the party. Um, as soon as the the pet uses a, an ability, um, even if it's at full life or if it's got half life, doesn't matter, its HP bar will stay there on the screen, the sprite for the, the pet will disappear, and the, the party will come back. So I don't get it. I don't understand. But whatever. Bard, I'm going to be using Antfly's um, auras, you know, passive states and, and aura passives, uh, to do some interesting, like, group, like, it's going to play, the Bard's going to play a song, but not only is it going to in affect the party, it's also going to affect the enemy party. It's going to play a song and tilt the 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 fields in one direction for the for the group. <clears throat> so how it basically would work is the bard would play a song like a, a valor minuet or something, and it would enhance the attack power of the whole party. But it would also reduce the defense of the entire enemy party. So you've got this compounding effect, right? And not only are you debuffing but you're also buffing the whole party while the song is active. And um, there might be some limitations to how many songs can be active. And I could do that by um, just making the durations, you know, on the states change. So you've got, like, some that are only three rounds, some are four, some are five, maybe some are ten, some are fifteen, I don't know. We'll see how it goes. I imagine the first spell the bard's going to get is going to be, like, some sort of pay on. And I'm probably going to give uh, some change up some of the abilities like pianissimo i'll probably make it with no cooldown so you could do pianissimo and i'm not sure what that'll do exactly i know it's going to narrow the scope but i might make it so that instead of narrowing the scope that it um just reduces the cooldowns or something like that um i don't know we'll figure it out bard's coming up next probably i'm going to jump past beastmaster most likely but i'm really happy with how dark knight turned out paladin needs some more uh some more some more work i need to add some provoking some more aggro stuff to the paladin but the rest of the classes turned out really well and i'm really happy with them um so far but we got to do the rest of these so we've got Beastmaster, Bard, Ranger, Summoner, Ninja, Dragoon, Samurai, Blue Mage, Corsair, Puppet Master, Dancer, Scholar, Geomancer, Rune Fencer. So I've still got a lot cut out for me. Plus, I'm going to make my own custom ones. I mean, of course, these are all customized because I've made them, even though I'm using uh, templates. You know what I mean? I'm using uh, uh, another game as a, a resource. Um, numbers and stuff have, have been customized and changed just so that it fits. Because you're talking about like a 15-year-old... Um, MMO game, you know, trying to convert that into something that's like RPG Maker. You're going to have lots of changes. So they've all been customized and made by me, but they're all in the likeness of the Final Fantasy XI, right? They've tr I've taken some efforts to, to retain some of the what you would have known them to do and be in in the Final Fantasy XI MMO if you played it. So this is definitely a big Final Fantasy XI MMO fan game, but it's a single player game. Um, <clears throat> but it's also a dungeon crawler RPG game, you know, at its core. So I want to add some of my own classes. Um, Vampire is one that I'm thinking of already. It's going to be a healer. Vampire is going to be a healer, and it's going to basically drain H drain HP to heal the party and have some sort of a meter of how much HP it's drained. But anyway, um, yeah. So that's basically what we're going to be doing in this video. We're just talking about the project ideas i have for it the progress of where it's at and and uh it's going to be a lot of just um concept stuff right and and also showing showcasing some of the things that have already been implemented anyway let's let's pick a character um let's say dark knight for this first job and we can name any character we can call him whatever we want so you could have any character that you see 
not a lot yet, but there are, there's going to be more. Um, any one of these could have um, any class, right? They could be any job, and they could also have any name you want them to have. So there's some level of customization there. It's not the full level of customization that um, I want it to have. You know, there's still be there's still a lot of things that um, I wanted to do with it, but I haven't got to yet. So let's go ahead and make. Uh, let's go with a warrior. <clears throat> yep. Ada, 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 you're a warrior. So it brings you back here, and it auto runs the process to um, to reset all the variables, right? And and um, also, when you get a party member, it's automatically giving you equipment. And I'm running a, a line of code when you warp back to the other room to equip that party member with all of their um, optimized equipment. So depending on what class you pick, is what gear you're giving auto, you're given automatically. Um, this is so that I don't dump the player with like 50 items at the beginning of the game, you know, because you don't want to start the party with no weapons and no armors, especially when the game is balanced around the player using weapon, um, replace. Let's get a healer. So we'll make Naya our white mage. And now she, all of her gear was awarded and auto-equipped, and now this whole scene is reset so that we can pick a fourth member. Um, and you can see she's got all her stuff there. Now this this uh, system is using uh, instance actors. So all of these actors that we're using in the party right now, these aren't actually in the database. These are, well, I mean, they are in the database, but they're set up with like no class or like um, their default name. And I guess their placeholder art is in the database. But what I mean is like, this character can no longer be controlled by uh, using the database unless I do a script call and reference actor variable, uh, actor member 1000, because how it starts is I set a variable to 999 and then I reference each one of the new actors that you create as the next variable. So this is actor number 1000, this is actor number 1001, 1002, and then the next person we pick is going to be our actor number 1003. Or right, one, two, three, a uh, thousand and four. Let, let's go with, a, I don't know, a monk. Cool. So we get our party and we get teleported uh, back here, but it, it auto, you know, gives the gear for that last party member and auto equips. And then we jump over to this part um, when this is like cutting out the storyline. This is where the party is going to start uh, after they set up their, their, um, their own you know, heroes. So th they get some items, some artifact tokens, a crater blessing point, 2,000 coins. I might get rid of this pop-up and just let it happen. Um, but I left it up here for now for beta testers and stuff. So we're going to walk on the glowing tile with a star on it, and that's how we spend our artifact tokens to get artifacts. And artifacts are really important to the game because the game is going to be slightly harder um, than average, but w the player is going to have opportunities to to get really, really beefy gear, and it's randomized, so uh, the replayability is super high on it. Um, you could get um, one star gear all the way up to 12 star gear. There's actually 13, because there's two uh, sets of equipment, the iron and the bronze, which are tier one, and each tier has its own stats, and everything's been balanced out on the armors uh, and the weapons. Um, the thing that needs more balancing are the enemy parameters really badly, and maybe some of the... Um, the skills but I mean it's pretty balanced uh, but the the enemy parameters are what really needs the most work right now um, but anyway we get this stuff and we're also letting the player know that you got some basic armors and weapons and they've automatically been equipped to save the player time um, use a crater blessing for your point uh, point from your inventory to gain skill bonus so this is something I'm probably gonna end up taking out or I'm gonna revamp and make it something awesome so right now it adds a small little bit of damage to some spells and some abilities but not all of them like if you use fire, it's not really going to affect the, the damage if you add to your fire variable. So, it, at the beginning of this whole process, many months ago, this was a, a, the core uh, damage modifier for your, your, your damage per, uh, formulas and the parameters of the skills. So it was the big core part of the game, but it's been phased out as I've rewritten things and revamped systems. Now, Creator's Blessing Points don't really do very much at all. Um, they add minuscule amounts of damage to some attacks, basic attacks, some weapon skills, 
and very, very few skills. So they really don't do very much. Probably going to take them out. But it's still there for now. Um, and if you did manage to uh, want to see what they are, we'll just or we'll take a look at them. You use your CB point. It just basically draws text, uh, show choice, and uh, shows a picture. And you select what, uh, you know area you want to put bon bonus points into. Let's just go with healing because I think that uh, affects your potions and how much you get from using potions as well. Um, so yeah, th that's basically it. You'll get those throughout the game, but like I said, I'm going to probably revamp them or take them out. You can see the gear that we've started with and it's all already equipped except for some of the stuff like the bronze helmet, the bronze plate mail. Someone is getting um, bronze helmet plate mail. Okay, here we go. So he's supposed to get bronze plate mail. I might actually take away... No, I'm going to keep it that way. I mean... And there was no helmet because she got the iron hairpin. Okay. And here's where we'll go. Oh, the monk can't use helmets? Or maybe I don't have one. I don't have one. Bronze body... Okay. I might have to look through that code and figure out what item is being awarded that um, shouldn't be awarded. So right now, there's a bronze helmet that uh, is being awarded for the monk, and the monk can't use the bronze helmet. So um, I'm going to have to give him like a headband or something. So let's do that super quick. I'm going to jump into... It's actually on the event for here. So I'm going to scroll down to where I have the player selecting monk, which is right here. And instead of a bronze helmet, we'll change this to give him a headband. Because this is heavy armor, and monks don't wear heavy armor, so that was just an oversight. That's a shield, accessories, shoulder pads, uh, cloaks, belts. Light headbands. There we go. Iron headband. So we'll just give him an iron headband and fix that little issue. Okay, cool. <clears throat> so if we select, uh, we'll take a look at everything in the game since we haven't really uh, looked at this game in a long time um, as a let's make a game standpoint. Um, the quest line that's going to be uh, used that you're on is going to be right here. This is the location that you're at and how many coins you've got. And then a, a menu right here. I've removed the clock because it doesn't work anyway. It, go, it works at 144 frames per second no matter what. So I change animation rate and uh, make the game run slower than it's supposed to do anyway. And I don't want to do that. So maybe one day that'll be fixed and we can have a clock again that runs right. So we've got artifact token. We did find a prestige. Um, the first thing we found when we were that blue glowy orb. And what this is going to do, like it says, it's going to let you fight bosses and mega, you know, bosses. Um towards the end of the game, the middle part of the game probably, um, where you could uh, have your character unlock new classes. You're going to need prestige to accept the battle, uh, and if you win that battle, then you'll get testimonies, which could be used to change your character's um, class, right? It's job. So if we click on skill, and we go to learn skills, we're using Yanfly's skill learn system here, you can see that we have all the parameters that start at 200 JP, um, just for the first tier, but once you've leveled up and got the stats, you'll have to pay 400, then 600, then 800, then 1,000, then 1,200. So it's a increasingly more expensive to upgrade your base parameters. Now, what's cool to note is all of your parameters will maintain that bonus no matter if you switch the character's job or not. So if I level up my strength and my vitality and then switch to warrior, well, I'm still going to have that strength and vitality bonus because um, it's on per character. Uh, modification not per class of character so that's how that works which is exactly how I want it to work I'm glad it finalized that way um so every class has the ability to unlock every other class except for the class that it already is so as a dark knight you can unlock every other class except dark knight because you're already a dark knight um, 
but in order to do that, you have to accumulate some JP, which is accumulated in almost every game the same way. You attack, you get JP. You take damage, you get JP. You make an action, you get JP. You kill something, get the final blow, you get JP. You win the battle, you get JP. There's so many ways to just, just doing anything with the character in combat relation is, is going to generate JP, which can be used to increase your base parameters, which is a, a diminishing returns because the cost goes up and up. Or... Um, you could get passive sta uh, passive states, which will be added later. So you could get like additional regeneration, additional uh, refresh, additional whatnot, um, based on your you know a ten thousand JP passive state that you've unlocked. It gives you this bonus on this character only. Or you could um, diversify your character and turn the Dark Knight into like say, hey, I wanted a red mage and. And I never picked a red mage at the beginning. I've been playing for 10 hours, and now I want to try red mage or whatever. So you can. You can unlock red mage. When you unlock red mage, um, you will need the JP. You'll need the testimony, which you get from fighting a red mage boss using prestige to start that battle. And you win. You get the testimony. You lose. You lose your prestige, but you don't get the thing. So you, you, um, you basically have to hunt down all the prestige. Uh, it, to fight the bosses and there will be many ways to get that stuff right now it's exploration bonuses and you'll see I have them distributed all over the place um, but basically that's it testimonies uh, are the items you need to, to unlock as well as uh, JP uh, some of the early jobs are only 3,000 and then as you get to advanced jobs they jump to 5,000 and that's it and as I add my own jobs they will be probably slightly more powerful but not very much just slightly uh, but they will be way more expensive to unlock. Like, the Vampire probably costs 10,000 JP. Just, I don't know. It's a number that was likely to, it's likely to change anyway. But we'll see how it goes. I've got a lot of work to do on that system still. But that's basically how it runs down. You can take a look at all of your abilities and all of your spells that you have. And also your Limit Bursts. All Limit Bursts are going to cost 100 TP to use. They're pretty strong. They do get a bonus from the, the, the CB bonus thing. Um, they're one of the few abilities that do still get some sort of bonus from that variable. That's why it's still in the game. So upgrading your sword bonus will add to your branding slash damage and your basic attacks even with your sword and greatsword. But on top of that system, there's another system, um, a proficiency system. So we'll go scroll past all this stuff. There's where we can see all of our bonuses. Uh, I've added it as using Yanfly's actor variables, um, you know, the plugin so you can just see your variables and you can see I put that one point into healing all of them get one at the beginning as soon as you select your party then you can add points to whatever ones you want um, Yanfly's status score as well this is Galv's uh, weapon proficiency plugin and um, it's a pretty cool plugin it basically adds uh, additional hit rate and critical hit rate depending on how often the character has used a type of weapon um, so one interesting thing I noticed about this is if you're holding a sword and you cast a fire spell Well, that's that still adds to your sword uh, Proficiency bonus. I don't know why that's the way the plugin works. I'm not too worried about it I'll just keep it that way um, You could always change how many actions it takes to level it up and as the characters do anything while holding that weapon they're going to get points so if you do a multi-hit combo like bop 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 well you're gonna get four points for that or however many points were allocated for each go uh, and as you level this up you're going to increase your your uh, percentage hit rate you know your accuracy and your critical hit rate up to a maximum of 20 percent so huge bonus for capping this so basically let's see so it's like five per one. So twenty divided by five. So if you get if you get ten, it's uh it's two percent extra hit rate. Yeah. So if you get like level two or, or level ten, it's adding two percent to your accuracy and two percent to your critical hit chance, which is a big bonus for your critical hit chance. So I've uh, made accuracy a little bit low on all of the weapons in between eighty and ninety, right? Something around there. Maybe some like white mage might have seventy eight percent because it's they're, you know they're not really melee class. <clears throat> but you got to uh, remember that if they were to max their whatever weapon they're using, they're going to get twenty percent critical strike chance and twenty percent chance accuracy bonus, uh, giving them a pretty gar almost a guaranteed chance to hit. Um, with, uh, yeah, I mean, with, with a higher chance to critical, too. But because of that, I had to do other balancing. So critical hits in this game don't do triple damage. They only do 
double damage because I put a lot of uh, guaranteed criticals on some skills, especially like the thief stuff. Plus, they have high uh, critical rate, like base critical rates, like eight or nine percent. I don't remember. It's pretty high, and um, as well as the Galv's weapon proficiency bonuses. So the the thief is going to have like a, you could say a thirty percent critical hit chance, you know, mid game or something, which is pretty high. Um, so I had to do something about that instead of making criticals normally do triple damage all criticals deal double damage unless otherwise saying the uh, is stated uh, using the Yanfly's critical core I do that as well I have some skills that will do quadruple damage when they crit and some spells will do uh, triple or quadruple and, and they are guaranteed to crit so um, Yeah, I had to do something so I, I criticals aren't as strong. They're they're double instead of triple <clears throat> Icons on all of the elements are in the process of being changed. <clears throat> They're not bad, but I want to change them all up. See what I did to the dark one here? I'm going to do the same thing for the rest of these on this side and maybe a couple of these as well. Yeah, just to customize a little bit more, I'm going to um, pick different icons. But when you change an icon for an element, you have to go through all your descriptions. And every time you've referenced that element, you've got to update that icon to slash I. Uh, whatever number, right? So, change one thing, you gotta change a hundred things. That's the nature of the beast. Um, Dark Knight has natural paralyzed re resistance. That's why you see that they have 50%. Like, uh, White Mage and Bard have, like, natural uh, silence resistance. And uh, some classes have blind resistances. And, and, and they all have, like, their natural innate bonuses uh, based on their class. Um, you can see hit rate at 86%. Uh, at with zero skills, so that's going to go up to 106% minus uh, evasion rate of your enemy. Um, so pretty close to guaranteed when you cap your weapon skills. Um, also, all the classes will have a, a regeneration rate, a base regeneration rate. Um, some will have HP MP, some will have HP TP, some will have HP MP TP, but they will all do a total of 5% per turn, adding up. So you can see the Dark Knight's got 1% HP, 1% MP, 3% TP. Uh, that's going to be a 5%. So the Dark Knight's going to generate a lot of TP. Might change that up a little bit. Might give him 2% HP and 2% TP because the Samurai is the one that's going to get the most. Right now, I think the Samurai, um, even though he's not made and the skills aren't there, I mean, the, some baseline things are there. And I've given it at 1% HP and 4% TP. So the Samurai is going to be the, the highest TP uh, generating machine as it should be. So that's it. Nothing else too crazy happening right there on that scene. I think we've gone through all of the status and stuff right there. Uh, options, um, you know, dash, command, remember, battle, camera, uh, sync monitor, FPS, keyboard, config. Uh, this the, the default stuff you... I mean, not the default, but the, the typical stuff that you, you want to have in your project is going to be there. Um, we've already looked at the jobs and the skills. Uh, equipment, quite a few things for the equipment. Um... Weapon, limit burst, head, earring, neck, back, shoulders, chest, waist, hands, ring, legs, feet, relic. Wow, all that stuff. Well, in Final Fantasy XI, there's actually more than this. There's two rings. There's two earrings. There's there's ammo slot. You know, there's just... So I just uh, took away an extra ring, took away an extra earring, uh, and added a relic. And uh, some classes will have two weapons, like the thief will have... Did I pick a thief? No, I didn't. Well, the thief will have uh, two weapons. I've made monks weapons, bronze knuckles, all of their two-handed uh, fist weapons, a single weapon. Makes more sense in the MV engine. Dual wield is such a hassle. Um, I've got it working for thief. Um, it still only attacks with, uh, like, the, the display the, the in battle. It just shows the, the first dagger twice instead of the first dagger or the second dagger. Um, there needs to be a better way to handle dual wield inside of MV. I'm also thinking about making a four-armed character in the storyline and just giving him four weapons just to see how it works because you could do that too. It's easy to do that. If you want to give a character four weapons, you just Yan flies, uh, add Yan flies, uh plug-in, equip core, and then do equip slot and then just go like weapon, 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 and that's it. Literally, when you load your character, he's going to be able to equip four weapons. <laughs> So that's it. I'll make sure you close it off with a slash equip slot. That's all you got to do. Make a Goro. Um, but anyway, um, as for the, the gear, uh, the first two, the first tier, the first two sets of armor, bronze and iron, they, they don't get the chance to have a random augmented 
properties, they can still be uh, equipped with stuff. Like we can customize, right? And go to enchant with certain stuff. You can see we can put an enchantment on it. We can put a blessing, a rune, or a crest on it for attaching augments. So we're using Yanfly's plugins in addition to another system that... Um, it's basically like a Diablo style loot system. Let's go ahead and get to it. Oh, one more thing before we get to that. This little stone right here, um, it'll randomly, um, well, periodically, display an animation and do a full recover on the party. So you don't actually have to, to get a full heal, you just walk by this thing and you get that animation and you get a full heal. So that's how you recover going back and forth between the dungeons. So here's the artifact draw system. Um, one thing I wish it would do, um, the preloader core was a good start, but it doesn't seem to do it anymore. I don't know why. It doesn't actually, it may load them, but it doesn't load them in the sense that the game, it, it seems like it loads something into your, your RAM, your preloader core, but it still doesn't speed it up uh, anymore. I don't know why. So the first time we watch this, we're going to see a little bit of delay in between every animation. And that's how it is in every project, unless you've got some sort of preloading. And I could notice it after seeing it. There's a little bit of delay, split second, in between every one of those animations. So now the second time, you you've, those are, now those images have been loaded. Those sprites have been loaded. And they've been called in a sequence. Those animations in the database have been loaded. So the second time, it's going to play a lot smoother going through those animations and every time after it actually only the first time does it have any lag um, and then it's smooth after that we could even hold down the enter button and it'll fly through that so let's hold down the enter button for this just speed it up a little bit there you go and what this does is basically lets you pick well you don't pick it, it picks a random item out of like 300 and something items and uh, if you have artifact tokens, you'll be able to get a random uh, piece of gear. And there's 12 tiers, 13 sets. Um, and every set past uh, tier 2 and above, so silver and, and up, will have a chance to have uh, random stats procced onto the gear themselves. Up to 5 prefixes and up to 1 suffix. Um, so also, after you do this, you I have a little bit of code in here that will automatically optimize the whole party if you want to. So you can say, no, I'll equip my armor myself or uh, auto-optimize my gear. So let's look at the gear we got. Actually, we'll go to... Oh, God. We'll go to items. So we, we ended up getting a, a staff. Or I'm sorry, a whip. A whip. We got a Conjuring Wizard Speedy Nebusite Whip. Now, in that the the thing, it said, oh, you've got a Nebusite Whip. Um, because that doesn't take into account uh, affixes in on this item. It, it basically just picks a, an icon from the database. So we still, yeah, we, we got that Nebusite Whip. whip but um, we also got Conjuring Wizard Speedy Nebusite Whip. Uh, and you can see the stats that uh, is being loca uh, allocated here are based off the default item plus the modifiers. So the default modifiers are on the description of the item itself. So 140 strength, 70 speed, that's what you get from the Nebusite Whip. Really, really good item. You can see it's a 6-star item. Um, but there's other stats on this item. Why is this Whip giving 62 MP? Why is it giving 23 Wisdom? Well, that's because it's got a, it got Conjuring Wizards Speedy. So I think Conjuring and Wizards... Oh, no, wait. Uh... Wizards is definitely the MP one, and then Conjuring is probably the Wisdom one, and then the Speedy generated a 1d10 of extra speed, so 70 here plus 5, so the, the Speedy uh, low level uh, prefix generated 5 more additional agility or speed. And that's basically how it auto... And that, that's just, it's just randomly picked. Like, look at this one. We got that uh, mithril hairpin but we got an enchanting speedy mithril hairpin of sorcery which normally would give us 16 vitality and 24 willpower which is defense magic defense um, but we got more stats to it because we got enchanting we got speedy and we got of sorcery so we're getting vitality we're getting wisdom we're getting speed we're getting mp all from that item and i think that was the only other item yeah we did get this item but like I said, it's a tier one item, and it doesn't roll, doesn't doesn't uh, have a chance to proc any affixes, uh, the tier one stuff. Um, also, store bought stuff won't. 
So you get in the, the game here and you um, basically build your party and you get some some artifacts, you know. We didn't get any good ones for our party. Um, but we can talk to this guy and he'll give us some story. And um, this isn't going to be like a full let's play or anything. So um, if you want to read the dialogue. Um, I'm also trying to not spoil too much of the game. Um, like that's why I don't put the story until the very end. But this guy talks about Captain Bones. This is Captain Bones over here. He doesn't look too good. Um, but he brought us here to best the dungeons. We can go in here to save the game if we want. Um, right here. I might change this because the save crystal thing is all cliche as fuck. So we'll change that up. Um, save the game. You can't save while holding artifact tokens. That's to stop people from cheesing the game, right? Getting 10 tokens, saving the game, and then rolling 10 items. If they don't like them, they load the game. So there's there's countermeasures. Uh, you just can't save if you're holding them. But uh, if you do, if you are holding them and you go to a save point, it will give you the option to teleport straight to a place you can use them. So going to a save point will let you um, a save eventually. You might have to just spend your tokens and then save. But we can save the game. And we'll save it, whatever, right here on this old file. And this guy right here, he's going to let us fight uh, some bosses and stuff. But this is a placeholder. Um, he's going to... We have prestige, but basically... When I've built them and have them ready to go, he'll be the guy to talk to. Uh, I might move him around, but for right now, he's right there. This lady, she'll sell you uh, some items. Your default... Uh, well, you know, I keep saying default, but they're not default. They're all customized. You know, your potions and your ethers and elixirs and phoenix downs. and There'll, there'll be more stuff added, like antidote type items and stuff. But I'm also going to try to make the, the antidote -like type items also do other things. Uh, the soft liquid doesn't. Um, because petrified is just a terrible one because it's like game over if your whole party gets pet if your party is if a party member is petrified they're counted as dead in the system so if you if all your party members are petri petrified it's instant game over um, or it's instant lose the fight because losing the fight does not always mean game over and matter of fact most of the time 90 percent of the time 95 percent of the time losing the fight just means uh, your your party members are at one HP and you have to go heal and try something else you could also go this way and talk to her, but she'll say you have to talk to her from behind the counter. Or we could pick up this uh, prestige. Slightly hidden there. It's hidden. It's obviously hidden. And we can come here. Probably put that on the floor here instead of on the bed, but whatever. Also, there'll be more NPCs added who will give you dialogue about uh, fights and about job combos. And basically giving information about the game that would be that could be considered very helpful or good combinations so um, when you unlock other teleportation points you're gonna be able to use this to um, teleport around the map I need to add more locations in and set up the whole system I'll probably use Yanfly's uh, main menu manager or, or no what is it called event uh, common event menu or something like that custom custom common event menu Something like that plugin to, to do the teleportation system. I liked how it was presented a long time ago, and uh, I'll probably adapt or adopt that sort of method of doing it. You could uh, try to heal yourself with this, but this thing just works automatically, and it just lets the play just more uh, flavor text on those things. If we were to, um, the base the guy basically says pick a dungeon or teleport around or wander around aimlessly if you want to. Um, but there's uh, because, like I said, there's a storyline in it right now. It's just basically... So we've got this town here. This will be like the first town you could go to. Very, very small town. You get prestige for exploration. And you can use these prestige later on to fight bosses. And unlock new classes. And get other cool stuff. That's our blacksmith right here. He will si sell the next tier of weapons and stuff. You can um, buy iron. It's still tier 1, actually. Uh, so bronze and iron, both tier 1. They don't have the chance to get any... Uh, prefix or uh, suffix or any affixes at all they're just uh, the next tier right they're basically double the stat bonuses that the bronze items do um, so you want to pick up some of these probably let's see what do we got we got a dark knight a warrior white mage and monk well the dark knight and the warrior can both use great swords so let's get a couple of these iron great swords let's get an iron staff for the white mage and what do we get knuckles for the monk Cool. So we can equip 
Also plan to put in the one button auto optimizer. So I've already got the code for it. Um, optimize that. Even though I already have too many item types, I also want to make a great axe weapon type uh, because I don't know. I feel like great axe is a is like an iconic weapon, right, for for a warrior. Uh, also thinking about scythes, but man, I already have so many items in the database, and it's it's really a nightmare. So this is an inn where um, you can pay to get restoration, um, but if you don't have the money, then it, it'll still let you heal, and it won't take your money. It won't take well, you don't have money to take. So if you have the cash to pay for the room, you will be charged the 100 coins. If you don't have 100 coins, it will um, just let you recover for free. We also could save it here. Okay, I had to remove Yanfly's save core because there was a conflicting problem with uh, the game crashing when trying to load... Uh, like, if I F5 and try to load a game, the game would crash. Because I'm using Himeworks' instance actors to generate all the actors and their faces. And even though those faces are in the database, they're re being referenced by actor 1000, 1001, 1002, like I said. So when the save core tries to reference those PNG files, they're not in the JSON file. Or, you know, they're not being referenced in the JSON file as actor 1000. They're being like copied and pasted there by a plugin but the the plugins are not like making note of each other's changes he may works as instance actors and in yanfly's save core so there's an incompatibility between those two plugins so if you like one uh if you like them both you have to pick one or the other and as much as i like the save core i went with he uh, may works as instance actors just for the sake of the way i'm handling the character generation so yeah, there's that thing if there was some way to disable the I also need to do, uh, what do you call it, a collision right here. Because I want these to be like this, or you can't walk on them. So we'll do that with Yanfly's region restriction. Anyway, in this game, you're going to be able to buy property. Um, you could purchase this home right here for 30,000 coins. You don't have that, of course not. But you can get it. It's not super hard. You could probably make that in an hour or less, depending on your level uh, at in this game. But anyway... Um, you can buy this house. If you do buy this house, every time you visit this house, you'll get a 100 round buff that gives you uh, well rested. And that buff can uh, do whatever you want it to do. I think uh, I gave it like 10 different small buffs. Like it, it gives like 2% this, 1% that, 1% damage reduction. So, you know, like a bunch of small things stacked on one state. Um, so buying that house will, uh, every time as soon as you walk in to the house, um, wait, can I just show you guys? I think I can debug that. Don't have enough for that. Uh, debug. Good luck finding where I have uh, the actual thing for it. It's a switch, though. Dun, da, da, dun, dun, da, da, dun. House deed. I think it's this one. Okay, so let's turn on house deed. Let's say we paid 30000 we bought the house. This is what happens. So it plays a little animation. Every time you come in here, you've received 12 minor buffs from Well Rested. 10% uh, Vitality, 10% Willpower, TP Charge plus 10%, HP, MP, TP, Regen plus 1, Resist Sleep 25% of the time, Resist Confusion 25% of the time, Resist Virus 25% of the time, 3% Accuracy, 3% Physical Damage Taken Negative, uh, minus 3% Magical Damage. So, lots of little buffs from from just uh, buying the house and entering. So now, they will tick down. If we were to walk around, I think it's like 20 steps, it'll go down one. Wait, did it just disappear? The whole buff? Okay, 100 rounds. Do we still have it? 100 rounds, take a step. 100 rounds. 100 rounds. 99. And gone. What? What the? Okay. I gotta figure out what's going on with that. Why is that state just going away? 
at 99. I'll have to figure that out. But whatever. Oh, man. You can buy property. Um, not only will property give you buffs, but they'll also give you other things as well. Um, in order to buy bigger property, you have to own lots of smaller property. So say you wanted to buy this guy's shop, which you'll be able to do eventually and get a cut of what he makes. I don't know how that's going to work. Don't ask me. We'll figure it out though, right? We'll figure it out. Um, you have to own multiple other pieces of property before he would think about selling it to you. Um, I don't know why. I'll have some sort of system in place about that. Also, I want to do some sort of request like list for this guy. He's a special blacksmith. And he could do... He can make some crazy stuff, but he just doesn't have the materials. So if you bring him the right materials, he can make you crazy weapons and armors and stuff. So oh, I do plan to have an ultimate weapon for each job towards the end of the game. We're talking a long time from now. But basically, you'll have to do a quest for that uh, ultimate weapon for that for that class, for that job. This guy, he's going to sell you the same stuff as the first uh, area. Just a, It's the same thing. You can buy potions, but you could also buy... Um, enchanted items and right now all I have are the the amulets in the store because I didn't want to add too many things to do uh, you know like analysis overload on I don't want to inflict that on the player so I took out the belts I took out the cloaks I took out a lot of other stuff they're still in the game they're going to be used but they're not just immediately offered to the player at the beginning so greenbacks that you get from completing the dungeons um, are used to buy your enchanted stuff which is basically um, weapons, or not, not weapons, they're, they're specifically like equipment. They're, they're belts that add resistance to states, they're cloaks that add resistance to elements, and they're uh, amulets that add potency to uh, types. So, if I put a spike necklace on, uh, necklace on my character, all of my physical attacks, everything that's labeled in the element core as physical, or you know, in the skill database, will do 10% more damage. Uh, healing spells, anything that's got the healing element will do 10% more. Same thing with Venom and all that stuff. This also needs to be uh, changed to Acid because I've renamed it. And you rename one thing, you've got to rename 100 things. So there's a lot of that going on. Every time you see Venom, replace it with Acid because that's kind of what I was thinking in the first place. Uh, also, the icons on all this stuff has got to be changed. But anyway, you get green back for doing the dungeons. Let's go ahead and jump into a dungeon. Oh, I just noticed that there's also prestige right there. I like to hide them right in your face. But anyway, that's the first town. You don't actually have to visit it if you don't want to. Um, you could just try the dungeons with... Uh... I could have bought some iron gear, because I'm wearing mostly bronze gear, right? And I've got coins. But we did upgrade our weapons. We'll leave it at that. Um, let's jump into a dungeon. So you, you enter here, and then Captain Bones will take you to the dungeons. Um, I've got two dungeons in the game right now. They're both pretty simple. Um, 1 to 10 and 10 to 20. And I'm using Yanfly's uh, uh, enemy levels plugin. So at the beginning of the dungeon, you've got your save uh, thingamajigger so that you can save the game. If you've made anything, uh, you know... Save you time. You're probably if you do die or whatever, you'll you would be it would be here. Of course, if you die in here, it's not game over. So that's just a the save crystal is more of a formality and uh, what do you call it? Like just a helpful thing, uh, a convenience. It's it's just a convenience because even if you die, it's not game over. But you still need to have some way to save the game, right? So our basic attacks are um, are all. Uh, Weapon replace using Yanfly's uh, Weapon Unleash plugins. They're all attack replace, so they're all custom skills for for all the weapons. This is an optional fight. You can get past the dungeon without even having to fight it. There's a couple of these in the game, but they're also um, if you want to get that loot, that sweet sweet loot, you got to do the the extra fights. Let's take a look at Pack Punch. Um, this is the the monk's 100 TP move. So, enough to one-shot, you know, your basic guy, which was about right. Seems about right. Um, he can't spam that, right? We've got a Phoenix down for that really, really good, because we'll probably need it. So, I've made that the same chest every time, but the next one will be a randomized chest. The loot will be different every time. Well, it could be the same, but you've got a pool of about 40 items. We'll attack, attack, and um, we'll just throw down some cures. 
We didn't sustain a lot of damage, but our maximum has grown quite a bit. So, um, you know, we've leveled up. Did Oh, I accidentally healed the enemy, because I'm pro like that. Anyway. Accuracy will be a little bit of a problem at the beginning, because like I said, you get a bonus to 20% of your accuracy and 20% of your critical hit chance as you use the weapons. So, um, periodically while you're fighting, you'll see this uh, animation play. You know, it looks like it's like out of nowhere, uh, and that's because you leveled up your weapon skill. Um, it looks like a white flash type of diamond thing, majigger. When it comes out, when it happens, I'll, I'll show you. The first level should happen pretty quick. All the enemies will have custom abilities, custom skills. The more customized, the better. I'm going to be using a lot of Akashic's art. We're getting orbs for uh, beating the enemies. So that was a randomized chest, um, and I think I'll make a note of playing that animation or an animation like that for all randomized chests. So we got a speed plus 10 core. This is an uh, equipment item, so let's go ahead and put this on our white mage. Let's say this is a good mithril weapon. Let's, uh, oh wait, nope. Let's go to customize this and go to the core section of this thing and put the speed core on it. So now we're going to add an extra 10 speed or agility to our white mage because we got this speed plus 10 core. So further ways to upgrade your character. We could also use very few skills outside of combat, but I make cure and raise and that's it's one of the things you can use outside of combat because why not, right? Also went through recently yesterday and uh, boosted the power of healing a little bit and the power of the the nuking spells for the Black Mage, Red Mage, Dark Knight um, a little bit because they were just being outshined severely by the DPS of the group. So healing is a little bit stronger. Now it takes into consideration luck, which in this game is renamed to Charisma. So higher Charisma will also reflect higher healing, but it's based off of magic defense and Charisma and a set number. So they're basically, you're going to heal a certain amount no matter what. But you'll get bonuses for how high your magic defense is and how high your charisma is. Also, like this little heal, uh, hiding spot for a prestige. I thought that worked out really well for that little hiding spot. And prestige will be awarded for fights as well. This guy we're going to die to, most likely, because he's, he's level 10. Uh, the other guys are scaled to your level. They will be your level approximately, give or take one or two levels. But they will never, none of these guys will ever exceed 10. And um, the other guys will always match the party's basic level. But this guy's the boss. He will be level 10, no matter what level your party is. So we're level 3 or 4 or whatever. He's level 10, and he's not a pushover. Um, let's see if we can beat him. I'm going to use my highest level. Wait, hold up. Let's start off with a Phoenix down. Let's bring back our White Mage if we want to have any chance to, to live. Okay, we're going to use our Blood Weapon. We get really good abilities at level 1, but the the timer on them is, is pretty bad. I mean, it needs to be that way, though. 30, 30 turns, and it's a 5-turn buff. But basically, uh, they're all really, really strong. This this will make all of your attacks steal life, even from the Stam Skeleton. So that... If he hits. If he hits. Okay. Molt, uh, Mighty Strikes is probably one of the best ones. I did re recently change Critical Strike to do double instead of triple damage now, but Mighty Strikes guarantees a critical hit. So 4,700 damage off of using a guaranteed critical Mighty Strike. So that was a pretty strong hit. I mean, but honestly, the party is just not high enough level or even geared correctly to fight this guy. We could still win if we get lucky. Uh, we should have saved that 100 fists. Or, or not 100 fists, that... Uh, Pack Punch that we used on the, the Trash Bob. Definitely should shave up your TP, TP for um, for the bosses. Branding Slash. Bam. The Dark Knight. Um, it still did good damage, but not as much, right? It didn't do critical. It didn't land a crit. Because Mighty Strikes also adds an attack power bonus, I believe. Bam. Bam. 
got spin attack. Uh, and he's got such a high agility that he's going to get two or three turns. If he does Phantasm, it's going to be game because it's going to give him like three or four turns back to back. It's an agility buff. Let's do Pack Punch. Hopefully it kills him. Bam! Nope, 800. Not quite enough. Okay. Let's just try attacking. Bam, bam. We can st still keep healing, though. Mighty Strikes. We can still maybe get a critical. Bam, bam. Phantasm is going to go like three times now. Critical. Bam. Ancient Blade. Blam, blam. Dead. Phantasm again. It's not good. Come on. Did some special criticals. We did pretty good. All right. We did pretty good for... Level 4, I feel like we, we gave it everything. If we would have saved that one pack punch, maybe we could have got it. I don't know. It only did 800, though. But when you die, it's not game over. You just don't get the special reward for finishing that boss. But you still keep all the experience that you got from fighting all the other fights. You didn't game over at all. You didn't lose any data. The only thing that changed was um, instead of getting rewarded for beating the dungeon... You get teleported out of the dungeon, and you don't get that gold or the, the greenbacks or whatever. But I'm also uh, changing it so you get an artifact token for beating uh, the dungeon as well. Um, so, yeah. I mean, we could go through it again and beat it. I kind of want to show you, but um, let's just let's jump. We need to level up. Okay. So, what if you can't beat the dungeons yet, and um, or you're tired of them? You could do other stuff, too. This is going to be an exploration mission. When you go in here, it's going to take you to a mission where there will be random encounters. And, and very few places will have random encounters. But that will be one of them that has random encounters. Um, those exploration missions where it specifically lets the player know, Hey, do you want to enter? Because there's going to be random encounters here. Otherwise, every place else is no random encounters are all scripted. You could fight bosses and stuff. This is actually a snake boss. I just didn't up, uh, uh, update the information there. Oh, kind of hidden, but still there. This is a boss, oh, excuse me, a level 50 boss. He's just going to eat us alive, but I'll show him to you. You could uh, learn more information about him. Also, I'm going to add a Libra skill and uh, a way to check other parameters of the enemy. So there's going to be skills. Ganfly said a, a tutorial on it, how to do it. This guy's level 50. We're level like 4 or 5. Um, so, I, you know, I don't know what I was expecting, but I do want to just... Uh, Check him out real quick. So you beat him, you get a limit burst, a really, really powerful item. It's like a six star limit burst. You get the ice beam ability. Uh, we're not going to beat him right here, but it's something for the player to do in the long term goal. Uh, there's, there's, there's a challenge there that the player hasn't beaten yet. And the player has to walk past this when they're like level 10 or 5 or whatever, right? So they'll encounter this if they're, if they're, uh, interested they'll check it out if, if uh if, if if what is it if they're curious then they'll check out what these statues do and then they'll see that oh there's a couple fight, fights right here and then oh shit we just died we got our asses handed to us yeah but you didn't lose the game or anything oh you know you learned that there was a fight there it could have some really good stuff um but you know you had to walk back and get a heal now because uh you died but you didn't actually game over. So let's get past it all this time. Um, so this is just like incentive to get stronger. You want to present the player with something that they can't beat yet. Or can they? Right? You know, like give, give them an, uh, a hard challenge that's not required. And it's a, it's a good optional thing in the game. So even if they're not interested in the story, maybe they just have a vendetta and they want to beat that one boss that killed them when they were just starting. So that's there, and there's going to be a lot more of those, and there'll be rewards for each of those things. So uh, on the world map, there's no random encounters, but there are uh, points on the map, which are like points of contention, or uh, they're just challenge events, where you're just going to take on a bunch of fights. That's all it is. And at the end of those set uh, sequence of fights, there's a boss, and if you win, you get artifact tokens for the first time doing it. Uh, and if you beat him by, if, if you do this certain strategy on the boss, then you have a percent chance to get another token. So the first time you do each of these, you're going to get three tokens uh, for, you know, up gear upgrades and stuff. But if you inflict the boss with blind, there's a 50% chance that you'll get an additional t artifact token. So you want to try to blind the boss to, to maximize how many tokens you can get. And that makes this repeatable. 
because now uh, even though you only get three tokens for beating it the first time you get nothing for beating it the second time every time you beat it uh, there's a chance if you blinded him that you can get another token so now it's repeatable content that little uh white flash icon on on sago here was because he's his weapon skill leveled up so he just gained two percent chance to hit and uh or no wait he, he gained 0.2 percent accuracy and 0.2 percent crit chance right then and there and permanently let's take a look at upstrike this should be an easy fight because these guys are one to five and we're already like level four or five so this is like right up our alley this is what we should be fighting uh it should be kind of easy because it's the first one so it shouldn't be hard you do get an overkill bonus if you kill them by doing more than 50 percent of their max hp on the last hit um then you get extra uh extra experience and gold and, and i don't know if i set it to extra loot drops i need to look at the plugin again but yeah that's that's a thing if you if you overkill you get extra stuff so this will give you extra which helps uh speed up the leveling process which should be pretty fast it's, it shouldn't take too long to level up it will slow down like i said as you get to 20s 30s 40s 50s and i would imagine going from 80 to 90 is going to be a, a pretty hard thing to do um but i also want to put things in place that makes it easier so there will be some events that you can do that specifically don't give loot but they give you experience or vice versa you know like this is for orbs and the orbs are going to be part of a crafting system that's going to let you convert those orbs into uh, socketable gear. So you're going to be able to turn orbs into into stuff you put into your armor, the the augments, enchantments, uh, stuff like that, and possibly even like limit burst and and other stuff. I mean, the orbs are going to go hand in hand with the whole gem cutting thing that I've got planned. Um, so they'll be like a mixture of systems. I mean, there's still a lot of ideas, and I know ideas are cheap. It's about execution, so um, I've been trying to execute on these ideas little by little, and it's coming together. It's looking pretty good so far. Um, compared to where it was many months ago, I, I would say it's, it's shaping up to be uh, more fun. And as I, as I hammer out all of the classes um, and all the jobs, uh, it's getting better and better uh, and adding more enemies and more maps. It's really a long process to... to to make a game as you guys know and uh the more time you put into it usually the better so i'm not in a rush to get this game out i know it's going to take a long time and it's already took in over half a year but you know persistence we, we've got to just we, we've got to try right i mean you're making a game too. You're probably watching this because you're also doing something similar and, and you're trying to pick up some ideas maybe or just see what other people are doing. And thank you so much for watching. Um, but yeah, just some, some general advice. Just keep trying, right? Um, you're never going to... You're never going to... Uh, how can I say this? You're, you're going to regret not trying more than regret you failing. So just keep trying, keep working on your project, keep working on your game. Um, maybe one day it'll pay off, right? Maybe it'll make you some money. Maybe you'll make a few thousand dollars. Maybe you'll make 10,000. Maybe you'll make 50,000. Maybe you'll make a million dollars on your game. You never know. Um, but if you don't keep working on it and you don't try and you don't give it your best effort you can, then you'll never know and you will never make that money on it. So I've got to hope one day that uh, this project can can net me some money and, and pay off for all the hours I poured into it. And like we all do, right? We've all gotta, gotta hope that. But before that comes to that, that's not the first thing. I ultimately wanna make a fun game for myself that I would love to play and replay and try different strategies on. Um, so that's what this whole, that's what started this whole project is like, I wish there was a game like dot 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 fill in the rest and that's how you that's why you could that's like your motive for making your game right i wish there was a game like dot 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 well there's not so i'm gonna make it right or i wish there was a game that took this aspect from this game but this system from that game but then kind of changed it so that it's like this and that's what i want to play well that's not out there so i could either wait around hope hopefully somebody makes that game 
Or I could figure out how to make that game myself so that I could play it. And hopefully other people could like it. And maybe it'll make money. So if you go in with that mindset, not like, we're going to be rich, boys. So, you know, like, that, if you, it's all about having the right mindset, too, when, you're, when it comes to this. Because even if this game um, gets finished and released and, and it doesn't make many sales at all, um, at, at least if it pays itself off. I can say I made a cool game, you know, I like it, maybe you'll like it, um, here's here's where you could get it, you know, and it, it, I would just hope at least it would pay itself off, right, you know, like something, a minuscule amount for some of the hours, a you know, fraction of the hours, the time spent into it, as well as any fees is like, you know, 100 bucks for the Steam Direct and whatever, you know, I would hope to break even, um, with a little bit of, of cash for the whole project but even if it doesn't amount to that I'm gonna have this as like part of my my portfolio right I'm gonna say this is a game I made this is this is you know it's whatever these are what some of the people have said about it this is somebody's first impressions of it and you take all those resources and you add it to like a portfolio and if you ever want to get a job you could always look back on that portfolio and and say well um, yes, I do know how to do that. Here's proof of what I've already done, you know. So it like it validates yourself as a game dev when you have a, a collection of games that you've made. So definitely keep making games, even if they're short uh, and crappy. You know, it doesn't matter. Keep making games. Keep trying, and eventually you're either going to um, Find a game that, that you just absolutely love and, and you can't stop playing. And you've found a game that you've made a game for that. Or you, you never know. That could be contagious. And people could also like it and not stop playing it. And and, uh, and that could turn into revenue, right? That could that could change and, and meta... But what is it? Metamorph into... Or it could change into uh, revenue for you. I don't even know. I'm rambling now. I feel like I'm rambling. But anyway, in the game here, we're, we're almost to the second boss. I need to do some healing. This is a 5 to 10 fight, I believe. And uh, this boss right here... No, no, not this boss. The next fight is the boss. That was another level up. And you can see that the monks and the warriors and the dark knights will level up their weapon skills faster because they get extra attacks. So... We need to heal. What? Why is my... Man, that camera... The targeting core. I, I gotta do some stuff with the targeting core. That's one thing that I notice. Like, the mouse... Uh, maybe I'll just disable the mouse for targeting. And just use the arrow keys for targeting. Because sometimes it, it gets really jank. Like, if you have your mouse... Let's see if I can simulate it again. Let's, let's kind of try to target with the mouse. Okay, let's say attack, right? And the mouse goes... Now I've got him targeted. If I press left and right, look, it doesn't move at all. Like it, it, the mouse overwrites the, what about WASD? Same thing. The mouse overwrites what your keyboard is doing. Which I don't know if I like that. I mean, okay, so let's see, 12 HP. I know that'll overkill. Let's, let's just attack him. Maybe we'll kill that one. Sweet. And now you can well, we want to kill it, guaranteed. We don't want it going next. So even if you miss, there you go. And then knuckle attack, that B. Bam. Bam. Accuracy will continue to improve on all characters. So at first, it may seem like you're missing a lot, and it will improve, though. As you level up your weapon skills, they will get better at them. They will miss less. They will land more attacks. And they will land more critical hits. Which is also why criticals are doubled instead of tripled. Let's heal that one. Lowest HP. I recently buffed healing magic, but I still feel it's pretty weak. Uh, it, it needs it needs some more love. I'm gonna keep messing with that formula. Maybe add a little more to the base value of healing magic. But I also don't want it too strong. 
because then it be becomes too easy, and also if the enemy gets healing spells, then it be can be a problem. You have to be very careful with when you give powerful enemies regeneration or like uh, healing spells and abilities. You can really drag the game out longer than you want it to be. So there we we've got a lot of JP that we can uh, distribute as well as a bunch of tokens. And if we win this fight, we can go get some more loot. So let's try to do boost and then do pack punch. Bam. That adds a little bit of attack power to his, his move. Okay, so we're... We need to do a Dia on him, but we also need to stay alive. So we're just going to do some BGs right there. Ah, 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 ah. Sago. Oh, that's boost. Okay, I was like, is he raging? No, he's, he just got boosted. So dark magic. Uh, Arcane Circle is going to give 10% uh, attack power, 10% defense, 10% magic defense to the whole party. Bam, 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 bam. Cool. And then we can blood weapon to heal. For all the damage we deal. All physical damage, take it. Uh, mind you. And Branding Slash, 2,000, come on. 3,000, alright. And now, with uh, Provoke, it's going to make so that um, this thing will only attack melee attacks uh, on Ada. But we're going to Mighty Strikes. And then we're going to Branding Slash. That should kill it, because that's critical. Yeah, Not too hard. I didn't want him that hard at the beginning. We got Protector, that's a good spell. That's going to reduce physical damage taken. So we get more um, artifact tokens here. We could take these tokens back to um, the town. Also, I want to give the Black Mage a warp spell that lets them just instantly warp back to um, a town or whatever. Just to give some incentive for the Black Mage or more incentive. But, I don't know. I'm also thinking about adding a new class of skills that all of the characters have. Because I want to give everybody the ability to spend 5 or 10 TP to cast Libra as an instant cast. So it doesn't take your turn. It only takes 5 or 10 TP. I don't know yet. Or 15. Something like that. And it, it casts Libra in the middle. of So so it doesn't take your turn at all. You just you just get information and for the exchange of some TP. Uh, and any class could use that. I want to add that like so the so you know what the enemy's weak against You know what they're strong against you know the states that they're resistant against by spending some TP to learn that in combat And I, I think I'm gonna go with that, uh, but I don't know if I'll make it its own skill class I'm also thinking about bundling that into the limit burst since all classes get limit burst anyway It's not really a limit burst, but I don't know. We'll see. Let's see if we get anything cool. Oh That's good that's good. 11 star item. 2% chance of any of these. 2% There's 1 out of 50 that we get something like that. What did we get? Aegis Sight Helmet. Oh yeah, that was a good pull. This is silver. I think it's not uh, terrible because it does get uh, the chance for procs. You know, it can be enchanted and stuff. This is garbage. Absolute garbage. Which you can expect in any Gashapon system, there's going to be a lot of garbage. There's about 35% of... No, 30% chance of Tier 1, Tier 2, I believe. 30, 35, something like that. So, 1 out of 3 of the times, it's going to be... Ah, oh, crap garbage, right? That one's good. Diozite. You can tell by the color of the crystal. That's kind of I, I know right off the bat. Uh, I don't know exactly... Ooh, the staff. That's great. I don't know exactly which item, but I know what, what category it's in, what tier it's in, because I've uh, set them to. This is also really good. That's 3% uh, chance, because that's the uh, tier 10. So tier 12, the highest uh, Driftite is... 1% chance, then 2% uh, chance for the 11 star, 3% chance for the 10 star, 4% chance, 5% chance, and then it, I think it changes at that point. So that's it, we got our artifact tokens, do want to auto optimize, yeah, put on our best gear. Once again, we're going to make a button to do that as well, like I did in uh, Legend of Driftwood. So what did we get? The Coral Flail, unfortunately, didn't proc any of the enchantments, 
but it's still a super powerful weapon for uh, for white mage. But we also got this for white mage as well. And this is going to let her hit physically hard, but this is also going to add a lot of other stuff. Plus it procs speedy um, and of the wizard. So MP, 10 agility. But the staff itself gives charisma, willpower. Now, this is why I want to use this one and not this one on my way. If I want my white mage to, to nuke or deal damage, I will put on the coral the flail because that does attack power and magic attack power. So like banish and stuff will be stronger. But if I put on the staff, then willpower and charisma, which are modifiers for the healing spell, will be bonus. So your healing magic will get a bonus for that. But I think the warrior can also use the flail. So we're going to put that on the warrior. And we still have crappy knuckles, iron knuckles. If we had um, a Beastmaster or a Summoner in the game, then we could use the whip. We did proc uh, a Tolerant Magic Silver Dagger, which gives us 16 MP and 187 HP. But, I mean, yeah, you guys pretty much get the gist of the game, right? Um, so far, this is... Keep in mind, this is without the storyline. This is just the mechanics of the game right now and, and the the foundation of... of you're going to have dungeons. You're going to have bosses. You're going to have... Um, like, you're going to have standalone fights that you just... Do you want to fight this boss? Um, here's what you get. And then there's going to be some fights that you have to use prestige to fight those bosses. And those prestige... Uh, it's like you're, you're, uh, you're anti up to the poker game, right? You have to use that coin to get into the fight. And if you win the fight, you get rewards, you lose the fight. We'll see if there's consolation depending on the, the instance. Uh, but all of the, the weapons and gear have a chance for a random proc, except for the lowest tier ones, uh, for like just randomized stuff. Um, the replayability in this game is already huge. You know, it's already a massive, a massive replayability scale because of the fact that your, well, all of your games are going to be different. Even if you pick the, the same party members, the same jobs, most likely you're going to have a different outcome because of the gear you get and then what uh, roles your classes will, will assume because of their strength and their gear and whatnot. But anyway, um, this is the next part of, this is the second dungeon level. We're going to die in here probably. Uh, let's do protect uh, on the party, protect bro. So we take 10% uh, less physical damage. These guys will hit and uh, drain life with their attack. So this is a little bit uh, harder for the level I'm at. Probably want to be level 10 to be in here. But, I mean, we, we might be alright. We're probably going to die at the boss. We do have, yeah, see, that's the Coral Flails doing some work right there. Um, let's do Banish. Her healing magic should be pretty strong. So 880. She should be healing decently strong because of that Diozite uh, staff. Really good roll on that staff. I recently changed all the staffs around. So now they actually, instead of just giving a lot of magic attack power, they they give a small amount of magic attack power, but they give wisdom, uh, which, I'm sorry. They give um, willpower, which is your magic defense, and they also give uh, charisma, which is you know your default luck. Let's try a cure on Sago. How much are we curing for? 450? Uh, it's not too bad. It could be better. It could be better. It did give her like a 100 boost though. Anyway, this is our monk. Have him attack. Bam, bam. Back, back. Back, 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 back. Got him. Da, 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 da. So we're level 7. <clears throat> A little laggy there, I don't know why. So here's a chest, right? There will be some points in the game where there are booby traps. So you open this chest, you get the prestige, but you get attacked by a boss. And this boss is level 16. So he's going to eat us alive. Almost guaranteed. Let's try to Dia, which will lower his defense. Or his vitality. And let's try to boost. And we will pack punch. Bam! Not too bad. Would have done a lot more if he had a better weapon. He's using tier 1 weapon. Let's do... Uh, well, let's just do Branding Slash. Bam! Let's 
See, that's the DOT triggering on him. We're going to provoke with uh, one of the warriors because I don't want Naya to get hit. Bam. Bam. Let's try to cure. There we go with the mouse again, right? Let's see. It doesn't let me, like, move. It's such a jank system sometimes. And I love the targeting core. It makes me so... Not sure about what I'm going to do about it, you know? Just note tag everything further, or, I mean... Is that going to fix it? Can I disable mouse? I just need to look at the parameters. Stop being so damn lazy and just fix this thing already. Just so many things, though. We did get the Paralyze. We did land a Paralyze. That's great. Apparently, it wore off. But we did stop him for a round or two. I'm sure that helped somehow. Let's cure... Get 100 fists, why not? Give us that three extra attacks a turn. Bam! 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 That's why it's 30 turn cooldown, because it's just such a strong... Ooh! Weapon skill level up. Ow. That DOT is dealing some damage. Let's try Guard Breaker. Whoop-pow! Got him. So we're doing pretty good because we did get a couple of nice weapons. Healing stronger than normal are... So that's the whole part of the Gashapon system, like... You could... You could get a, um... A really, really powerful item. And it could really help carry your party to do the next tier of dungeons. You can still challenge yourself by doing content above your, your party. That's basically what we're doing here. Bam, 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 bam. This song that we're hearing, I don't know if you could really hear it at all. It's, uh, I made it. It's customized. The rest of the stuff you heard in the game, uh, I did not make. Those were OC remixes. This is a song I made. It's just percussion. It's just percussion. I'm going to change this one for um, the boss. Like right now the boss has that same battle theme. But I want the boss music to be different. Either bigger, better percussions. Or um, or maybe some metal. A metal track or something. Yeah, a lot of the things you see in here are basically going to be placeholder. And subject to change. We'll do a boost. <clears throat> And an attack. I might drop the HP on these guys as well, but I think if you think about it, when you're when you're a higher level, they're gonna melt faster. They're gonna melt faster. It seems like they have way too much HP, but keep in mind these guys are for up to level twenties, and we're level eight or seven, so we're not really supposed to be fighting this, but we can. It's just a little bit harder. It takes a little bit longer. Bam. We would be best off uh, farming the 1 to 10 dungeon, to be honest. But I, I did want to kind of show you the other dungeon, which is just uh, a map that's turned into a, you know, quote-unquote dungeon. What is a dungeon, anyway? It's just a map where your party fights monsters and... So, not all dungeons will be, like, deep, dark caves and zombies you know sometimes it's just a swamp and you're fighting swamp things you guys remember that show it's an old show but I'm pretty happy with uh, the progress I've made with the game. I, I know I've got a lot more to do, and I need to finish a lot of the classes. And by making, I'm not going about this the the best way either. I'm, 
if you were, were trying to get this done in a timely manner, you wouldn't do like 18 classes. You wouldn't do like 25 classes like I'm doing. You would just do about eight, six, seven, eight classes. That's all you need. Party of three or four people. You know. I wanted like a playground, like sandbox area, right? Where I can try different combos. And, and I don't know. Like, I feel like every class I add is, is takes a lot of work. But... It, I do it because that's the way I want it to be. <laughs> like, it's not the best way to get your game finished, right? You're, you're, you're doing more. It's like when people say they want to add multiple endings. Well, you do realize that you have to design every possible outcome, right? You have to design every one of those endings. So you wanted 100 endings. Well, you're designing 100 endings. Now, you can go about this multiple ways. You can lower the quality you know, and rush through them and, and smack them out as fast as you can, then you're going to have a bunch of crappy endings. Or you could have one spectacular, amazing ending and spend all of that effort and time designing that. Now, what's better? A hundred crappy endings or one amazing, spectacular ending? Well, I don't know. It's up to the person. I would say one amazing one, but I do like multiple endings, right? So... You, when you're thinking of a system that you want to have multiple endings, you have to kind of decide, do I want to sacrifice the time making these 99 or 98 or 97 other endings when most people are only going to see one, two, or three of them? So just try to be real with yourself when you're thinking of multiple endings. Is this game going to have multiple endings? Probably not. Probably not. Uh, well, yes and no, because here's how I'm thinking it would work. Depending on, you know, I don't know, because it can be different in every game. I think no, it's probably not. It's going to have like a one specific ending with maybe extra cutscenes tacked on depending on if this, some things have been, you know what I mean? Like, like it will be one main ending, but there will be extra cutscenes depending on what the player the choices the player made in that playthrough. You know what I mean? Like, you might get an extra cutscene for a character if you met that character. Um, you might get an extra cutscene um, for, um, you know, for somebody if you've done something that involves that person, and and so forth and so on. So there will be extra cutscenes at the end, but it, I wouldn't specify, like, a few extra cutscenes as a new ending. I'm going to say it's going to be one grand ending, but lots of extra cutscenes to 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 fill in any plot holes I made throughout the game cuz every game is going to have plot holes so you have got to try to fill all your plot holes with your ending you want that final resolution of your game to fill in any holes you've dug for yourself in throughout the plot so this is the second hardest fight on the map this is like the the three the three guys you fight and then oh my god there's like bosses there's 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 a boss fight. So I don't know if we'll get past this fight. I'm, I just want to get to the boss so you can see him. So yeah, I'll, I'll just do this because I want to get to the boss. We're not going to beat the boss anyway. He's going to like Blizzaga and just destroy us. So I'm going to do what I can to win. Bam! Branding slash. Bless. In hindsight, I should have put two of those on one. I was hoping for a crit, though. And then I would have taken one out. Ouch. Ouch. We should have upgraded our gear. Mighty strikes. Criticals. Bam. Bam. And uh, boost. Take him out. Bam. Bam. Or not. Okay. Ooh, blood weapons up. Great. Dark Knight power. Now we get some HP back. Bam. Should have attacked the other one. Damn it. It's all good. 
Gonna heal. Paralyze. Did he get paralyzed? He got paralyzed. Damn it. Wait, can I use that? No, I can't. I need to make that not usable. That's a bug. Okay, so we found that problem. Bam. Bam. Toxic spray. No. That's the strongest move. Blood weapon. Bam. Bam. Weapon skill level up. He's going to drain life from me. I'm going to drain life from him. Bam. Bam. Chomp. I'll drain it right back, buddy. Bam. Bam. And we win. All experience goes to Driftwood. Drain. Oh, Drain's a good one. Um, I upped the, the strength on that, too. Because it was useless. Absolutely useless. So I had to make it useful. Because <clears throat> the Dark Knight doesn't have much magic attack power. It, what did I say? I mean, the boss was just going to... I mean, it's level 20. You should be level 15 to 20 to fight him. and like how, We're like half the level with crappy gear. couple of decent items. So... That's exactly what I expected to happen. Uh, you lose the dungeon, you don't game over, you just get teleported out here and just, you know, walk by this thing and it'll it'll heal you. Bam! You're at full. If you did win, you can go in here and spend your points and uh, get a new artifact token. You would also get green backs, which you can use to go up here and or, or even in, in here, the same... Oh, man. You could spend, you get 10 greenbacks for the first one, 20 greenbacks for the second dungeon. But you use those to buy, like, enchanted items. Right now, only amulets, but I'll, I'll unlock more later. They're already made, like, belts and cloaks and all kinds of stuff, but I wanted to keep it kind of simple. So right here, it's only going to be pendants. Maybe in the next vi the dungeon, the next village, I'll have, like, uh, belts, you know. And then that way you can, each location will have its reason for having the shop there because they sell different stuff or whatever. But you, you would spend those greenbacks you get for uh, beating the dungeons to get these amulets, belts, uh, cloaks, and stuff like that to, to change those rates. Um, you get prestige points and fight your mega bosses and your other bosses and whatnot. And uh, did I do this connecting thing? Okay, I fixed it. But, I mean, yeah, there's, there's still a lot more to get done in this project. Did I get this little sweet prestige? <laughs> it's hidden so well. I think that's it. That's probably good for uh, let's make a game. Basically, uh, this is the first episode in a long time. I wanted to go over where we're at and to give you guys some ideas of what I'm doing in my project and things that you could possibly do to add to your project, um, as well as talk about ideas um, that I plan to fix and, and plan to get done and just some pitfalls and random bull crap just me ranting and stuff but anyway if you enjoy these uh dev update logs uh on the dungeon of the driftwood i really appreciate um you smashing that like button so please subscribe to the channel if you're new here i've got rpg maker envy tutorials i've got game maker studio 2 tutorials i've got all kinds of different content jrpg stuff related game dev related check it out check out my channel if you're interested some top tens there and um yes thank you guys so much for backing me on patreon all of my supporters i love you guys for backing me on patreon and uh We'll see you guys in the next video. So that's it. Thank you guys so much for watching. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Yo-ho, a pirate's life for bones. <laughs>